Hello YouTube, this is Runner. A couple of weeks ago I showed you a Nanobot farm that was quite compact but also a bit complicated to build. Today I'll give you an alternative design that is easier to build and can achieve higher rates. But this design does require a bit more space. It's based on Gnemon's ice farm. A player sits in a water stream and plants the nether warts using fast right click or an auto clicker. As the player reaches an end of the section, he goes over a pressure plate that flushes the grown nether warts down into the water stream. And so he has space to plant new nether warts. And the only redstone in this farm are the pressure plates and a bit of redstone wires to extend the signals to all trap drawers to the chamber. And just a clock and a tiny bit of redstone here to supply the player with fresh nether warts. I have two versions in the world download. One smaller version that gives about 2300 nether warts per hour. And a larger version that gives over 9000 nether warts per hour. You can build it even larger, significantly. But first let's have a look at the me mechanics of the farm. So the player crouches and gets into a water stream. And the water streams also take care of the nether water transport. And what happens is that we look exactly straight forward. So as you see from Xero's map, from the Xero's minimap mod, mod on the left hand side, I'm looking exactly at a 90 degree angle and I'm looking exactly at the soul sand blocks that are the furthest here to the back. And this way I will start by planting the last nether wart in a row and then plant all of the other nether warts against it. There are some inconveniences. One is that the player has to aim very, very precisely to plant five rows of nether warts. If you don't do that, then you miss a few spots, like here. And the further you're away from the optimal exact 90.000 degrees, the more spots you miss. But usually if we go the other way, then we are perfect. So we miss the nether warts only on one side. If we aim correctly, then not. We don't miss a lot of them. The other inconvenience is that the player, of course, needs to be supplied with nether warts, as all of the nether warts are flushed into the water stream away from the player. So here we have a dropper that puts nether wart at double hopper speed into the water stream, which is not quite fast enough to resupply the player. But at times we'll find some nether warts that weren't flushed into the water streams but on these ice patches. And we will pick up a few of them. And all in all, this works out really nicely that the player pretty much always has enough nether warts to plant fresh ones. Of course, the last inconvenience is the requirement of an auto clicker. We need fast right click or periodic right click once every tick. Uh, if we just hold down right mouse button, we would miss a lot of spots, unfortunately. But the good news is that this is all client side and works on any vanilla server. And another mod that I use, but this is not strictly necessary, is inventory profiles, which will refill the hotbar. That means if I have placed the last of these nether warts, the mod will automatically swap the next stack into my hotbar. So in the rather rare case that I run out of nether warts while planting them, the mod will grab nether warts from the inventory. And of course, if I get additional nether warts, they would go back and fill up my inventory. So if the player reaches the end of the last chamber, he will be held in place here by this piston because nether warts take about 34 minutes on average to grow. So we want to harvest the nether warts after about 40 to 45 minutes. So this is just a clock set to something like 40 to 45 minutes. And once it fires, this piston will be retracted long enough that the player can start the cycle. The nether warts will just cycle. The ones that come from this dropper here will always go back out this way into the output stream. Then they go over a couple of hoppers supplying the dropper. And if these hoppers are full, then the rest will go into this hopper here to the output. The redstone is really easy. For every row, we have a pressure plate and we have different ways to wire that. For example, here, redstone torch, redstone torch here to the roof. And just for the duration that the player goes over the pressure plate, this redstone torch will be disabled. So this redstone line will be off. The trapdoors will be released and flush down the grown nether warts. So how do you start a farm? The clock is set 
that it starts if you flip the lever. So basically in survival you just go into the water stream, you crouch, you will pick up a few nether wards and then don't go too fast over this pressure plate. If you go too fast then a lot of the nether wards will remain here on the platform. Make sure that you don't have depth strider boots because if you have you will get stuck on these ice patches. And then you move to one of these ice patches here and then you stop. If you use a map like Cirrus minimap just make it show the angles and adjust it that you look exactly at 90 degrees and the last block. Now it helps if you turn the mouse sensitivity down a bit which will allow you a bit finer control. If you don't have a mod like Sarah's minimap, use the F3 screen and find the facing values, which will also tell you if you have exactly 90 degrees and then you just have to make sure that you target the last block in a row. Then enable fast right click or your auto clicker and just push the player a bit to the left and you will start going here. And as you can see, everything will be planted. This farm is potentially faster than the flying machine based farm. So on average, the player goes one block per second in these water streams and can plant five nether wards, while the flying machine does one block every 0.6 ticks. So this farm can be faster. Now, if you are wondering about lag, obviously the nether wards are circling all the time. But even if you build a larger version of this farm, like this one here, this is not too bad. It's around 2 MSPT for the large version, so I wouldn't worry too much. But maybe more important, if you don't use the farm, you can turn this off. And once the last items are collected, this farm generates no lag at all, except just a tiny little bit from these hoppers and this clock, which doesn't really move the needle in any way. You can use this concept to plant crops like wheat, carrots, beetroots, potatoes and sweet berries if you use farmland here. The water keeps the farmland hydrated, so that works out. But the problem is that the hitbox of these crops is a lot smaller. So even if we go to a perfect 90 degrees, you can't really place more crops against the back one without moving the mouse. So what you have to do here, so what you have to do here is to aim at the closer and it depends a bit on the crop how far you can go. With wheat, I think you can just do three rows, like so. Maybe if you move it just a bit. There you go. For other crops you might have more success. Sweet berries are a bit larger. You may be able to plant four rows if you aim it just right. But to be honest, for normal crops it's just too easy to build an automatic crop farm like this one, which is essentially the farm by Redizio. Enhanced by a 6x hopper speed chucker box unloader for the bone meal. And here all of the crops go out into my storage. So I can produce about 10 chucker boxes of wheat per hour and carrots and potatoes at twice the speed, roughly. So I wouldn't bother and I would use this farm only for nether wards. So how large can we make the farm? The one hard limit is the speed of the player. It takes us 18 minutes to go around all of the lanes once, in a large version. As I mentioned, nether wards take on average 34 minutes to grow, so we want to harvest, say, after 45 minutes. From this, we could make the farm about 2.5 times larger. In this case, the player would be constantly in motion, so we don't need the clock and the stopper here. But to achieve this, we have to work around a few problems. And I haven't constructed a larger version, because I'm happy with the size here. But if you want to chase world records or nether ward production, here is what you need to do. The first issue is the random tick area, which is by default more or less all chunks within 128 blocks. Let's use mini hut to show the random ticked area if the player is in the corner of the farm. And as you can see, all of the farm is perfectly in random tick range. So regardless of where the player is, all of the nether wards will be random ticked and grow at the best possible speed. The area of this farm is just under 100 by 100 blocks and about 5600 soul sand blocks. But if we want to blow up the farm by a factor of 2.5 while keeping this shape, 
we'd end up with an area of about 150 by 160 or something. And this would mean uh, that a significant part of the farm might be outside of random tick area if we are in a corner. Which still works, but it increases the growing time. So you would probably more have to aim more for 60 minutes or something like that. The alternative would be that you do this in several levels. So you could essentially stack two or three of these farms on top of each other. And then at one corner, use a water elevator to move the player up to the next level. The second issue is, of course, that the nether walls in the water stream that we can enable here will despawn after five minutes. Items in water streams are significantly faster than a player. So this is about the size that you can get away with. I think the items need about four minutes or maybe four and a half to go full circle, but you couldn't do it any, any larger. At some point, you would need to make sure that they cycle only part of the farm so that they don't despawn. Of course, you can have them inserted in just a small area, like shown here. So basically, you would have a dropper, the nether wards go into a water stream, and the player can't go past this barrier here. The player would just go around the corner like normal. And the nether wards are looped back here, once around the bend, and here where the player would continue around the corner, the nether wards are shot out, group them to stacks again, and catch them with a hopper. So that's technically not a big issue, but it would be some effort because you probably want to wire them up so that these are only active if the player really is in the vicinity and can pick up nether wards. This all can be solved, but again, I'm very happy with the size of this farm, and I don't think I will ever need to build a larger one. Because after all, even though we can use nether wards to create red nether bricks, there's only so much red nether bricks we can use in our builds. So this is kind of a fast take on the second nether ward farm that I designed. Now probably somewhere sometime on the internet has already designed a similar farm, but at least I didn't have a blueprint for that. So let's say I designed it myself. I think it's really simple and it should be rather fast to build. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Subscribe so that you don't miss any videos and see you next time. Bye bye.